All right, I'm going to start getting into a little bit more advanced setups. Um, I'm going to go over momentum setups and then also um, retracement setups. So last week, basically, we went into uh, the basics of the algo, the indicator, and the strategy. Um, feel free to go back to part one of a four-part series, what we're going to do with this. I'm going to go a little bit more advanced strategies on how to trade off of longer time frames and how to look for momentum in markets and how to look for uh, retracements. So um, today, as, uh, a lot of you traders were in the room. Um, I called a lot of big inflection points on the S&P based upon the charts. And uh, it worked out really, really well in our new setup that we have um, that we are going to uh, go over with you on the algo that you have in your hands. So we all know about retracement setups, right? We all know that if we come into, into the zone, we're looking for a reversal with trend. Uh, I went over that quite a bit last week um, in the hour that we had last week. So I'm going to show you how you can cherry pick those on which ones that you want to look at and uh, how we can uh, utilize those zones for high probability reversals. And so play the last video. It goes over why those arrows come up and so on. Okay, today I like to go over this uh, a longer time frames. Now, the time frame I'm showing you right now is a 12020 Uni Rinko. All right, so when I talk about longer time frames, um, we show in the room a 113, 13. Everybody has their own spin on Uni Rinkos that Ninja has. Um, this is my own way of looking at things. I've never seen anybody use it like this before on the time settings that I use. I, I'm not time, but um, as far as the Uni Rinko uh, uh, settings that I use. So um, I like these settings. Um, we show a 113.13 on the retracement. You can pretty much uh, do whatever you want to do. Uh, this works on the Sim Rinko bars that we have, and it also works on the Uni Rinko bars, and it also works on other uh, other bar types. So. Depending on the bar tip you like, um, you know, this system will work on it. But what I like to do, I'll show you what I like to do on longer time frames, is I like to use a 20. I wouldn't go as high as 30. I don't go higher than 35. But um, I do like the 20 for uh, the ES um, uh, 18 to 20. I like 20 preferably uh, for these setups. Um, some of you are using um, a 13 uni, which is fine. Um, 18 uni, which is fine. It's just what my preference is. You can pretty much put the um, bar type that you like. Um, I'll show you what the 20 does, though. Um, there's two specific setups that I look forward to. There's a momentum setup and there's a retracement setup. So the retracement setup, we have these zones. We all know these zones right here. All right, these are our retracement zones. There's specific zones that reverse in the, that like to reverse these markets, and here's one of them. All right, here's my major zone that I like. I, this is my 54 up top, my 38 below. And what I like to do is I like to see the longer time frame. Let's get into a little bit more advanced trading for some of you that have the software for a while. I like to use a longer time frame against a shorter time frame. So, you know, this is a 20 uni. It's a 20 uni, 120 20, and this is a 113.13. So you can see it's a longer time frame. I'm sorry, longer, I'm sorry, not time frame, but longer bar type, meaning longer Rinko being a 12020. So you have the retracement setup, two setups I look for every single day. You have what's called a retracement setup. That is a zone retrace. Zone retracement. And then I'm going to show you how you can utilize the system and use a momentum retracement. This is momentum. Now, we are going to have um, a workspace that we're going to send out to you guys already preset with this momentum setup. Um, I'm going to send out a chart today to Gerald to send out to members only. I'm going to show you exactly how to set this up. So no need to ask how to set this up, what moving average is, how to do this oscillator. I'm going to send this out in an email to all members only tonight. And then we'll have a workspace for you members where it's plug and play. But let me try to spell momentum correctly. One sec. Jeez. So there's a momentum setup. 
All right, so this is the S&P today, and I'll show you the NASDAQ futures, a few other markets. It's all the same setup. These are your two main setups if you're going to use the algo. You know, we do have the speed setup, right? We got the speed when we have six red or six green. That doesn't come up too often. When it does, you get that nice momentum retracement on the first and second wave. I went over that last week. I'm going to go over a little bit different spin on showing you something a little bit different this week on how to catch momentum. Here we go. Do it again. I keep saying Momo. So our momentum setup is comprised of this. Is that I have two moving averages on top of my ATR chart which I'll send out tonight how to do it. And then I have an oscillator below. Now, a momentum means that you have strength to the downside or strength to the upside. So first of all, we know the ATR has to be red. We have to be red ATR. That's a key. Or it's got to be green ATR. Or we can't look for zone retracements or we can't look for momentum setups. So if it's red ATR, then we know we're looking for what? We're looking for sell setups. So there's two ways you can do it. You can look for a zone retracement into this zone where the arrow is automatically going to fire like this over here at the zone or in the zone for an entry. Or you can look for a momentum set, set up as setting lower highs or higher lows. So depending on how you want to do it, I like taking both. I like taking zone trades. I like taking momentum trades. Let's go to the momentum trade first because this is kind of a new setup to some of you, and it's, it's a neat little setup. So after I put these two MAs on your, on your algo, I'll show you how to do it tonight, and I'll, I'll give you specific instructions that Gerald will send out to you how to put this on your charts. And then we, will, we are making a workspace for you. Just click the workspace and insert it. Gerald will have instructions how to do that. But it says this. If on a momentum setup, let's take a look at it. Number one. Momentum setup. Number one, you got to go with the, the ATR, ATR um, trend, whether it be red or green. So that is first and foremost. You got to go with the ATR trend. That's either the red ATR or the green ATR. Okay, that is key. You got to go with the ATR trend. Once we know the trend. Then on momentum setup, what we want to do is we want to make sure the trend is aligned with my two MAs. My smaller MA and my larger MA has to be with trend, meaning if it's a short, then you want the smaller MA below the larger MA, and if it's long, larger MA above the um, the smaller it may above the larger it may if it's a long. Now, here's a key. So we got a momentum setup where ATR is red. ATR trend is red. With the smaller is below the larger MA. When it retraces, when you see this red sell-off, red, 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 red unis, the first time you see the green bars start or green unis start printing, once they start printing, get ready to look for a setup, all right? Once they start printing, it tells you we're in a retracement. Watch the oscillator below. If it is below my level that I'm going to give you and the oscillator that I give you, if it stays below this level, the red level, at the time of the red reversal bar to pull yourself in, then this is a short right there. That is a short. That's called a momentum setup. Your stop loss will be two ticks above this swing high. Right there. Okay. That's a pretty big short in the S&P. This is uh, 72 down to 65. So almost seven S&P points. These are not small moves that these momentum setups sometimes produce. We had one into the close that was a nice one. I'll show you in a second. I'll show you some buys earlier in the day too. So that's what you want to do. You want to see the smaller, smaller and larger has to be with trend, meaning smaller has to be below large, large has to be above trend. So 
when you retrace, you don't want these guys to cross over again. If they cross over against ATR trend, then you have no momentum in the market, like over here, and you have what? You have what's called a retracement, I mean a, um, an oscillating market or a full retracement. So when you are zone, I call it a zone retracement. So over here is a zone retracement. So you have two zone retracements. This is a zone retracement. Because you don't have momentum, you get a deeper retracement. All right? That's a zone retracement because it got above my red level. And it came up to my zone and got a pull in for the short. Same here. Okay? So you got the zone retracement momentum set up. So all the momentum set up says is this. If, I'm, if I have a red ATR and I'm cranking down and I got my moving averages that agree with my ATR and on the retracement, I'm not crossing above my larger MA, I have total trend balance to the downside. The ATR is a key to make this work. You go against the ATR and just go with these MAs, they don't work out very well. So the ATR will really get you in the right direction. I also find after hitting a zone, and coming out of the zone, the first momentum setup is typically the best setup to look for also. Just heads up on that. But the momentum setup says if I, on the retracement, if I stay below my level that I'll get you out in this workspace and I get a red reversal bar, then that is your entry level to go short. Now, that's momentum. How can I sell these zones up here like it caught this real high zone? It's a huge short. Potential right here was at 92.75, all the way down to 65. So you're looking at 25 S&P points potential to the downside, and you have the exact bar to get in right here with this reversal, this arrow. How can you use a larger time frame to look for zones in? So the momentum is pretty self-explanatory, easy to look for, because that oscillator just cannot get above my red line before you get it uh, when you get a pull-in bar. If it's above the red line, you're in an oscillating market or you're in a deep pullback of zone retracement. So if I do not get above the red line and I get pulled in and these MAs don't cross and I'm red ATR, you've got a momentum set up. I see these setups. You'll see them all the time. And please email me with your results. I'm seeing 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 S&P points straight down or straight up potential on some of these momentum setups. They are brisk and they are fast. Okay, even on larger time frames. So it's a neat little setup that I wanted to get you members involved in because it works on all markets, all futures, all currency, all stocks, all Forex, whatever it is, this workspace will work on it. Okay, so let's go look for the zone retracements. Remember, I'm teaching a little bit more advanced setups. So I'm not only teaching you zone retracements because it's called the zone algo, I'm teaching you after it gets out of the zone, can we take these trades? Absolutely. Because sometimes you get these blow-off sell-offs or blow-off rallies, and you'll see these print. I, there's days where I see this print, three, four, five momentum setups in a row, and it's very straightforward, and I'll show you how to do it, okay, all you members. So the momentum setup, small or larger, it had to be a trend. And then our oscillator for sales, oscillator for sales. It has to stay below red line and buys oscillator has to stay above green. Okay. I'll show you the I'll show you the buy here in a second. There's there's four or five good setups here today. There was like about ungodly amount on the Nasdaq today. I'll show you in a sec. All right, so there's an oscill oscillator that shows that if it's below the red, that means we are what? We are in a momentum setup. If I get above red, I'm in a zone retracement setup. Okay? Are we all on the same page so far? Give me a what? Are we all on the same page? Oscillating, I mean, the zone retracement versus momentum. We all good to go? Everybody good? Okay. All right, so... That being said, how can I cherry pick this high then, this zone retracement? Well, some of you don't want to trade off of a large time frame, obviously, right? 
So I'm showing this large time frame and a smaller time frame in the room off of 120 20. Because the rule of thumb is this, and here's my rule of thumb trading off of a Uni 120 20. If you trade off of a 1 10 10 Uni Renko, your stop should be uh, 13 ticks, right? Three ticks above. Minimum two ticks. Two to three ticks. If you trade off of a 1 15 15 Uni Renko, you should probably be at 18 ticks. You trade off of a 20, you should be at about a 23 tick. Now, 23 ticks isn't, doesn't do any harm if you're trading the micros because it's not a lot of risk. It's one-tenth of the big contract. So be aware of that. But there's a way you said, okay, I like the 120 and I like these larger time frames because I like how they call the turning points on these zones and also the momentum. How can I get in with less risk, let's say, on a 13 uni over here? Well, the big time frame, just like we used to have the 8 sim Renko in there, this larger time frame with the uni now sets it up just as well. What I want to see is I want to see this. I want to see a speed bar. Speed bar inside of my zone with the arrow printing at the same time. If I see the larger time frame printing a speed bar right at the zone, at the, at the inflection turning point, right here, see the speed bar, this box, with the arrow, you have confluence. You're looking at a large time frame on a possible volume spike into a reversal area. All right, so then you can use this to fire in these trades to get these zone trades that we talked about in our last, last conference call. Okay, so the other thing is is our supply demand line. Okay, in the new workspace, you grant if you're trading on a larger time frame, you want to trade change the supply demand line to a 35. Okay, which I will do for you in the workspace. Change to 35 because these things are excellent. These supply demands. The one level I preached all day of breaking was 81 and three quarters. I said we get below 81 and three quarters, look for some serious downside pressure in the in the net and the S and P. And I talked about that at 8:30 this morning. How did I know that? Is if I went in, I went down and I, I skinned it down, and I seen my d d supply demand. Skin this down. My supply demand right here was 81 and three quarters, and it was holding all day long. And it said, it came up to it twice, hit its head, hit its head, and fell off of it. I said, if any time you get below that supply demand, that supply line or demand line, old demand equals new supply, look for retracements up to it. It gets back below it, look for some carnage in the market. And we sure got at the close too. So this is a what? What type of setup is this going into the close right there? Let's talk about this setup right here. What type of setup is this looking at the algo and looking at the oscillator? What type of setup is it? It's a, it's a momentum setup. Now we talked, I went over this with the members in the morning, this morning, and it's just like I drew it up, right? Cameron, Adam, Bill, exactly like I taught you how to do it this morning. I said, if we get below, now look how that, look how there's my uh, new, new demand line at 73, that becomes new supply. Look how it cut below it, retest it. That's why I like these demands here too. But look how the oscillator stayed below my 80, stayed below, and I got the reversal bar, okay? And I was in the room typing in how I'm short the market, which I was. I'm short the market at that level on the NASDAQ futures and the S&P, and this was a doozy. It started out right there at 70 and a quarter and got as low as 53. So that was 17 points of potential on the S&P into the close off of my momentum setup right there just like that because what it's doing is it's telling you this oscillator tells you if I get above if I don't get above this on the retracement and my MAs don't cross then this ATR is probably going to fail if it fails you know that this there's a high probability chance of just falling apart so the best ones that I like to cherry pick are the ones that agree with the ATR so here it happens several times a day you got ATR trend, you blow my 81 three quarter demand line. We have uh, the oscillator is below um, below the 80 and you got a nice little crank to the downside. If you come into it on here, like for example here, we come into the bottom of the zone. But look at the oscillator, what it's telling you. The oscillator is telling you I'm below 80. I come back up to the top of my zone. It hits head right on it. This is after breaking the demand line. And it told you here the market should fall apart. 
right there. Sure enough, we got another one, another big one on the downside. This is this afternoon's trading. This morning on the breakout, here's a here's a here's a buy sell buy signal. Is this a right here? Is this a momentum setup or an a, a retracement setup right here? Momentum setup or a retracement? Which is it? Momentum or retracement? It's a momentum, right? It's a momentum setup because what we're doing is uh, our ATR agrees with the MAs that we put in and the oscillator below. More importantly, our ATR is shifted to the upside. Remember, this ATR, I back tested this long, long, long time. This ATR is my own spin on it, and it's a really, really neat little indicator. So if I were to come over to here then, and I come into my zone, and my oscillator is below the 20, now I'm below the 20, and I and I get a, a green arrow over here on my, on, my, um, on my smaller time frame. Is that a momentum setup or a zone setup? Momentum or zone? Which is it? That's a zone setup. So what you want to see in the zone setup is you want to see on the larger time frame, you would like to see a WPT form and you're good to go. Okay? So let's move forward. Now, this is the best setup that you're going to have, and it happens over and over, week after week after week. This is how I come I came up with this um, with this setup. What I was noticing is, and once you guys notice, these supply demand lines are great, but I really like them with the large, larger time frames because our whole idea about supply and demand is you break it, you break old demand, it becomes new supply, right? You retest it, and then you get the continuation, right? We've always talked about that since we've opened the room. I love that ABC setup, one of my favorite setups. So what I noticed is with the algo, if we don't get the zone, what if the market's too weak and we never get to this zone? What if I never get up to this zone? What if I never get up here? Does that mean I shouldn't trade the market? Does that mean I shouldn't trade the algo? Absolutely not. What I'm showing you is another advanced way how you can get in the market with momentum and it tells you, it gives you a big heads up. The ATR tells you we're flipping to the downside. That's key. I got a sell zone here if we get a deep retracement. What if it never gets a deep retracement? I want it to close below my damn dead man line. My morning at 8.30 this morning, I told everybody 81 and three quarters, it could fall off the face of the earth, right? Why? Because if I skinnied it down, there's no demand line below me. Look at this. I got no demand on the larger time frame. Nothing but downside. So when I see demand get closed below two closes by the uni, and I retrace back up with green uni bars, and my moving averages that I'm going to give you guys are spread apart and are not crossing back up to be a zone trade, and my oscillator is not getting above 80, look how weak it is, that tells you you're in the best possible uh, set, uh, set up for success. You're an extreme momentum down. Now, if you run this setup with my ATR and oscillators like this, and I'll show you the larger time frames, my zone reverses um, the NASDAQ and so on, you'll see a lot of trades on the NASDAQ like this. In fact, if you want, when I give you this setup tonight, if you guys want to have some fun, watch a NASDAQ. It's crazy. There, I'm telling you, there had to be at least 40 setups today like this. So, um, you know, you can watch on the, depending on the time frame you use. Now, if you use a NASDAQ, the 20 I love for, here we go. Let's just break this down in a larger time frame. The 12020, if you're going to use this type of setup, you don't have to trade entry off this. You can trade off the smaller time frame over here if you like. But that's good. I like it on the ES. I like it for the YN. I like it for the NQ. I like it for the RTY. I like it for the Russell. Or the now you can do the micros too. All these micros are the same too. And so, you know. Any time frame in crude, those are my top ones right there. You know, those are my top ones at 12020 that I like. Um, like I said, you guys, it's your own, you can have your own spin on it, any time frame you want to do, because these are adjustable. If you're a scalper, bring your time frame down. 
if you're more a position trader, I mean, this is a nice trade here. 78 potential down to 71 or 72. That's six S&P points, just like that, a momentum from 11.02 to 11.08. So in six minutes, six S&P points, not bad, 24 ticks. So a potential. My point is, is that that works really well, the 120.20 on these. If you, if you want a higher time frame, the one that I would do a higher time frame is the NQ. The NQ time frame, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go any higher than 35, but you can go up to 35, and you can adjust how you want to do it, depending how much kind of speed you want to see. But the 25 works good, 30 works good, 35 works good, depending how much, how much speed you want to, you can handle for your entries. Okay. But the normal setting for a 20 is nice and smooth. I, I sh I'm showing this in the room from now on. If you want to watch this trade in the room, um, I keep this in the room now, these supply demand lines with the ATR, with the momentum setup and the retracement setup. Okay. So that is the ultimate one though, because when you break supply demand, if I got no demand below me, look at this, no demand line or supply line. I mean, demand, I mean, that's just, you're, you're giddy. You know, you, you really want to try to short the market. All right. Let me get this back up here real quick. All right. So let's say on the upside then, let's see, da, 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 da. let's get a retracement here. Let me find one. All right. So here again, this happened uh, that we just talked about, the momentum and zone setup. So once again, if you come down and you're breaking through demand, that first retracement is your zone. Make sure you stay below 80%. Now, what if you're in an oscillating market? Watch this. This is an oscillating market. Now, watch. Do I have any momentum trades from in that hour of trading? Yes or no? Any momentum trades? Give me a Y or give me an N. Any momentum trades on the S&P this morning from 10 to 11 o'clock? Bill says no. Adam says no. Why? Why wasn't there any momentum trades? Because what is our os the oscillator is oscillating, which it means it is a what type of market? What type of market is that then? What do we want to do then? What, what type of sales do we want to do with this ATR trend? Zone sales, correct. So this one is the perfect zone right there. Why? I got a WPT right at the high. WPT right at the high. On the larger time frames, let me, let me educate you on something. I don't care about the color because you're getting a big surge in volume on a reversal. I don't care if it's red or green. Red can reverse the high or green can reverse the high because what you're doing is you're getting a big spike in volume on these reversals. All right. So that is oscillating. What I like to see, since I changed your trend lines a little bit on your supply demand and your trend lines, I love to see when they overlap. It gets me all giddy inside when I see this. See it a lot. The CM overlap, the zone will overlap with the supply and demand looking for the retracement. No, the momentum chart fits in. This is a little bit more advanced, Cameron. A little bit more advanced trading. I'm showing you how you can find how you can look for setups all day long, just using these two setups. Then I'll go uh, the momentum chart I went over last week, guys, right? How we turned six red or six green. It ties exactly into this. Because what happens? Well, let me because I want to take this a step at a time. What happens, Cameron, is if you get, we're in an oscillating market here, right? If you get all six dots that turn what? Red. Right here, we're cranking down. And you get that first retracement up to here on the longer time frame. And the oscillator is right there, below 80. Guess what? That's your first and second wave that could be big. Make sense? They all work together. It's giving you big heads up when there's strong momentum. 
this just tells you it tells you to pinpoint exactly which wave should be big gives you the exact wave which should be big yep south down the ground gives you confluence so that's the beauty of it you can literally just put this chart up without even looking at this zone over here and dictate your trading all day long like if i would look at this chart right my supply demand started out today called the high m top called the high well, let's take a look at let's take a look at today's trading i broke through actually let's go back when it was oscillating okay let's go back to seven o'clock here okay i'm in an oscillating market right oscillating i'm not i'm staying above my green i'm getting below my green above my red oscillating so what do we do we know i'm educating you guys that the turning points are at the zone i'm oscillating turning points are at the zone turning points are at the zone this is the big one though why why is this better than this trade over here why why is this trade setting the trade up for a big reversal why What's the difference in this reversal and this reversal? And why did this peter out and this come down to the zone explode? What's a key ingredient on a retracement we need? We need a deep retracement, but we need a what? We need a what at these turning points on this larger time frame. Now that I'm showing you how to use a larger with smaller. What do we need? We need speed coming into it for the bounce. What one key ingredient do you need on a zone retracement? We got 54 as a number staying above it, but what else do we need right there? What's the difference between here and here? It happened over here too, right there. It happened right here too, right there. We're getting a what? We're getting a WPT. We're getting a speed box. All right? So, the difference between this had no box, did it? It's so it's telling us there's not a high probability reversal. Here it did, right there it is. We're right at the zone. First green reversal bar. There's our entry. There she goes. And that was a nice trade. We're, t we're not talking small moves here, guys. 97 on the first wave went all the way up to 10 points, and then went all the way up to gosh. 10, almost 17 S&P points to the upside in a matter of, gosh, an hour, hour and 10 minutes. All right, then we come up again. We come into the zone. We get the big speed box in the larger time frame for a possible reversal. Zone, oscillating, entry. Now, some of you want to use a smaller time frame. You can to pop in if you get a reversal out of these levels. We do not need six green or six red. When they do line up, you're looking at a high speed possible scenario there, Leo. It just adds confluence to the trade. It just adds, adds to the confluence. Then another one, here we go. So that's oscillating, right? Then we move on. We're moving on. 930 comes in. And now 9.30, we all know it picks up some speed. And guess what happens? We come up. What do we have right here, guys? What's the market telling us what to do right there? What is this? What is that? Is that a zone trade? It's a Momo trade. They're cranking it. Your entry is the next reversal bar, 4,000. It got up to my speed bar. I mean, my my uh, su supply line called the high of 40.17. 17 S and P points again potential. Okay. Now, why was this not a zone sell? What happened here? Let's make sure we understand this. Why was this not a zone sell? Because the oscillator was above the red but why why can't we just sell this reversal bar right there why what did the market do what happened there we got the speed box right 
right into it. Two bar close outside of it negates it. That tells us what? You got a potential demand in the market. Retraces, speed comes in, and that's our retest long right there. You'll see this happen over and over and over and over and over again. It's a beautiful setup. Now, we come up. Now we got our ATR moving, ATR moving. Right? We get the reversal. We get the reversal at this level. See the speed come in. There's our speed. There's the entry right where the arrow's at, and we're off to the races again. The, the, my point is, guys, is you're going to see you want speed to come in. You want speed to come in, right? You want When you get a new ATR, you want to explode because that's typically where you're going to get the nice continuation. The MA, no, never crossed. Yeah, here's the thing about it. Adam, to take any momentum trades, this this cannot cross. Okay, so here, let, let me explain something to you. Any time frame you're trading, I don't care if you're scalping or if you're trading long. I mean, if you're trading uh, longer time frames. This MA cannot cross through the, smaller can't cross through the larger. When this oscillator comes down, it cannot cross. It can touch it, it just can't cross through it. I don't even like them touching. I won't even take the ones that even touch. But you're allowed to touch it. If it's an equal close, uh, what happens, you'll see equal closes of the MAs, and they'll just explode, explode straight up or straight down. Uh, no, because you close two closes outside of the zone. You close two closes outside the zone, it negates the trade. Right? To close outside. So then we come back inside, right? We come back inside. Right here, we zone, right here's a zone buy, right? Oscillating market, zone buy. It tries to do it here, but look what happens. We come up, right? We come up, and then what happens? Right back down because the oscillator does not go above what? It doesn't go above our 80. And then we get a reversal, and then she crashes back down. This is the best one. These are a little bit more difficult if you're not watching it. So for you new traders, I prefer the ATR in the direction of it and just break it, retest it, and then there she goes again. Here is my, comes up to my oscillator again. Here's my reversal bar, speed bar reversal. That is two times confluence with the demand, supply line. And then you get the nice little move to the downside again. Right there, another one. You can see how that works. Okay? So what you ideally want to see then is you want to see, let me bring over the, the NASDAQ futures. So if you're trying to trade momentum, guys, if you're trying to trade momentum, you're trying to get this, right? You're trying to get this. Oops. You're trying to get a pullback continuation. Oops, let me get down there. Now I'll send this. I'll mark some charts up and send you how to set this on your own charts tonight. See how, now if it would have went below what? This is a zone. Let me get my zone in here, sorry. I don't have my zone in. Get my zone in. This is the same rhythm on all markets. All right, let me show you the difference. This is our zone trade. This is our momentum trade. All right. Here's zone, zone trade. Momentum trade. Everybody see that? Hmm. 
Now, on the larger time frames, it does not fill. Shorter time frames, it does. Larger time frame, there's so much. There's so much. There's a lot more volume in that inflection point. That's why. It just has to show me some type of 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 spike. It's got to show me a spike. So, on larger time frames only. Smaller time frames is still the opposite. Yep. Just like we do. All right. So this is our zone. And like I said, we'll uh, we'll put these. Um, we'll have a workspace for you guys, and then I'll I'll draw something up to send Gerald tonight too. Get out to you, so you you don't have to wait for the workspace while he's doing the workspace. We'll get this out to you guys, so you can put it on your own chart. Start watching this tomorrow. And then here's a zone trade, and it doesn't matter what you guys can pull up. Forty different markets. It doesn't matter. It's the same setup. It's the same exact setup. It's either going to be a zone or momentum. When you get six red or six green, watch out because that's typically one of the biggest ones that we're going to see that fires off. Okay. Does everybody understand these two trades? Like I said, we're going to start getting into a little bit more advanced trading with this. How to cherry pick these trades. Everybody understand the momentum versus zone trade? Everybody good? Just give me a why if we're on the same page. Everybody got it? Yes, yes. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, so what I'm going to do is we have the zone trade on your strategy right now. And I will be adding, I'm already implementing it now. The, I've been, ran probably, I've probably run close to in the last three days since I got it done. God, I had to run at least 40 trades on it, on uh, live trades, on um, momentum. And it's feeling good. Everything looks good. So we will be adding that to the suite, to the strategy suite down the road. So on my next update that I get out to you guys, you can manually trade it now, but I'm adding that into the strategy where we'll only look for momentum trades with this oscillator in the direction, whatever market you choose and whatever time frame that you choose. That is going to be added. You can have zone and you can have the momentum either one. Okay? Yeah, I'll send everything out to, to members, Veronica. I'll, I'll, I'm going to put it very clear for you guys and I'll do this after we get off the conference call. And Jiro will ship it out to you. I already talked to Jiro about it today. And then he's going to set up a workspace for you, Veronica, and all you guys and gals. And you just double click and the workspace will be automatically set up for you. But I, I don't want to put the stress on Gerald saying, hey, get this workspace out tonight. You see what I'm saying? Is that I kind of told him at the last second it would be easier if we get a workspace out to you guys. So he's going to work on the workspace. But I'm going to give you all members the exact settings how to set this up. 